Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we are talking about IUDs. Does it hurt to get one? And if it does, what can we do to make it better? I wanted to make this YouTube today because there is so much misinformation and so much scary stuff about IUDs out there. So let's break it down and get to the facts. Welcome back friends. My name is Dr. Jennifer Lincoln and I'm a board certified OBGYN and I love using social media to bust myths and get the facts out there. So let's get started. First things first. IUD stands for intrauterine device. It is what it is. It's a little device, a T-shaped device that goes in the uterus that is used for birth control, helping with periods, protection of the endometrium, that's a whole other topic, and also emergency contraception. IUDs are good for anywhere from three to 12 years, depending on which IUD that you use. I've covered IUD information here before, so check out the card up top if you'd like to see some common myths that I bust about IUDs. What I'm talking about today, pain. Does getting an IUD hurt? Let's talk about it. IUDs are a type of long-acting reversible contraception, or a LARC. Just like the next one on arm implant that I've covered in other YouTubes too. Check out the cards there. So we OBGYNs, yeah, we like our IUDs. In fact, one study showed that we are about 20 times more likely to have an IUD than compared to the regular population. And it's because we know that it, they're a great form of birth control, they're a set it and forget it, and they're over 99% effective, so kind of awesome. But let's talk about the insertion because that's what gets a lot of play. People say, I heard IUDs are really painful and really uncomfortable to get. I've heard it's like childbirth. It's the worst pain of my life. And so let's talk about it. So here's a breakdown on what people commonly feel with an IUD insertion. And the actual insertion is a quick office procedure that takes a few minutes where we put in a speculum, we look at the cervix, we clean it off. We measure how tall the uterus is to see how deep we need to place the IUD in the uterus and then we place it. And there's a couple points along the way that can be crampy or uncomfortable, or for some people, painful. Here's some statistics about pain with IUD insertion. One study showed that the anticipated pain, so the amount of pain the person thought the IUD was actually going to cause, that was actually worse than the actual pain from what they experienced during the insertion. Another study of people who never had any babies before, who had an IUD placed, about 60% of them said it was about as crampy as a period. For some people, having IUDs placed are not painful at all. In fact, one study showed that 9% of people who had an IUD rated it as not painful. 72% in that same study said it was moderately painful, and 17% said severely painful. Ouch. So important message number one with IUD insertions. Some people don't feel that it's that bad at all, while others feel that it's severe. So what you tend to see on social media, or at least what I've come across, is people who've said that their IUD was the worst experience of their life. And that makes sense. When people have a really big experience or something that just felt terrible and they wanna share it, that's what people tend to post. What you don't see are the majority of people who have an IUD placed and had no issues whatsoever. I myself have had four IUDs, so my first one was before I ever had kids. My next two were each six weeks postpartum after I gave birth to each of my kids. And then my most recent one was just a few months ago because mine was up and it was time to take out the old and put in the new. And I can tell you that for each one of those, it was not bad at all. Once I didn't even, even notice that she was done. That was my experience though, and I am not going to let my experience cloud my vision with other people who've had painful experiences. And I think that's the key take home message that we know that it's a spectrum of what people feel. And what people feel is what they feel and that's valid. But do know that if you are avoiding an IUD because you think all insertions are terribly painful, that's not the whole story. And that's the most concerning thing that I see about sometimes people posting about any procedure is that you don't get the whole picture sometimes. However, let's talk about how to make it better for those where it does hurt or just to prevent it and, or treat the pain in general. Here's the thing. We have a lot of studies that are out about how to make IUD insertions more comfortable. And I've definitely seen it said on social media that the reason we don't have better treatments to treat IUD insertion pain is because it's a woman thing and we don't treat women's pain as well as we treat men's pain. I'm not going to disagree with that because let's be real, that tends to be how things go in medicine, right? We tend not to get as much research for women's health research. That said, there is a lot of literature and a lot of studies that have been done looking at how to make the IUD insertion experience better. And the family planning community especially, they've got a ton of research. A lot of this was done at my residency institution and by people that I have trained with and people who've trained me. And so research is happening, so I don't want you to feel hopeless, but of course we can always do more and we can always do better. So I wanna talk about treating pain at three separate points, before the insertion, AKA pre-medicating, during the insertion, and then pain medication for after the insertion. Okay, now we're talking about pre-medicating and I've got five medications that we're going to review. Number one, NSAIDs or non-steroidal anti-inflammatories. 
fancy words for ibuprofen and naproxen, aka Aleve. Studies have shown that ibuprofen doesn't really do a whole lot, but Aleve, however, may in a higher dose. And so that's where you take this medicine you know, before the insertion, and it's not actually to help with the pain during the insertion, but it helps with the cramps afterwards. There's another NSAID called Toradol, which is an injection. Think of it like an injection form of ibuprofen. And one study showed that some people thought it really did help with the IUD insertion pain, but others said that the injection was actually just as bad as the IUD. So kind of a mixed bag. In terms of stronger pain medications like tramadol or opioids, some data has shown that tramadol may help, but it's a balance, right, between giving everybody opioids for an IUD insertion and the side effects associated with that versus some relief. So I think it's definitely a conversation to have with your provider and know that maybe it might help, but it's not a guarantee for everybody and it may be overkill for some. A third medication is called mesoprostol, and it's a medication that's placed in the vagina or taken by mouth before the insertion to kind of soften and dilate the cervix a little bit to make it easier to slip the IUD inserter through the opening of the cervix. We've studied this in a lot of different doses, and we have seen that with lower doses, there's no difference. With higher doses, it may help the insertion a little bit, but there's side effects associated with mesoprostol, especially cramping, nausea, shaking, chills, and a lot of studies have shown that people who got mesoprostol wouldn't recommend it again because of the side effects. So there's not a lot of great data for that one. The fourth medication for pre-medicating is a cervical injection. So actually putting two injections to the side of the cervix and also at the top of the cervix to help with where we put little grasping tools that can be pinchy and to help with the overall discomfort during the procedure. These injections in and of themselves can actually be painful and studies have shown that the pain of that sometimes outweighs the benefit of pain relief during the procedure. And the fifth thing I'm going to talk about are topical medications. So using a lidocaine medication, like a numbing gel or a numbing spray on the cervix. Some studies have shown higher doses of these, so a 4% lidocaine gel or a 10% lidocaine spray applied to the cervix beforehand can help with insertion. So that's not a bad one to ask your healthcare provider about. Okay, now we're talking about during the procedure. So during the procedure, it's really that same topical medication to the cervix that I talked about, because one part of the procedure is we put a little grasping device onto the top of the cervix to help us control the uterus. And that lidocaine cream, it's a higher dose lidocaine prilocaine cream, can help with insertion pain. And it helped with pain during the insertion, but it didn't help with cramping afterwards. Okay, the IUD is in, yay! What about pain afterwards? So the most common symptom people will have after an IUD insertion is cramping because the uterus doesn't like it when you mess with her. And the way that she reacts, she squeezes her cramps because she's a muscle. So ibuprofen, Aleve, those sorts of things can help with cramping afterwards as well as opioid medication. But again, remember, you're dealing with a risk benefit there about taking opioids. What about other stuff? Like why do we just have to talk about medications here? It's true that there are some other things that we can try too. So I looked at one study that reviewed kind of these other alternative ways of dealing with pain. And they looked at inhaled lavender. They looked at being on your period. Um, sort of an old school thing, but we used to think that when you're on your period, your cervix was opened a little bit more, so it made it easier for insertion. They also looked at inhaled nitrous oxide, like what you use at the dentist office or on some labor and deliveries. None of these did a whole lot. None of these were any better than people who didn't have these interventions when getting their IUD placed. Now, the study shows that, but if it works for you, or if maybe you had a really hard time with your IUD insertion and you wanna try again and come back when you're on your period, I mean, that's totally legit. But it's just that in larger studies, there weren't a ton of benefits, but it doesn't mean it might not work for you. None of these address the anxiety aspect, right? And I feel like that's what I would see with a lot of my patients who came in. They were more anxious and worried than the actual procedure itself. And again, it makes sense, right? You hear horror stories from your friends, you see stuff online, and so you're worried. I totally get it. So one intervention that has been shown to help is what we call psychological preparation. So that's like fancy words for good counseling and everybody should get this. So a good explanation of what the procedure is like, maybe watching a video about it and an objective video, not a scare tactic video, but a, you know, a real video that shows what it's like, walks you step by step, you can ask your questions. So that way when you show up for your appointment, you feel ready to go. So that same study where I mentioned the inhaled lavender, it did show an effect on decreased anxiety, not on pain, but we do know that your level of anxiety certainly changes your perception of pain. So go ahead and you know bring all the lavender in that you want. I would totally be okay with that. Okay, so let's wrap all this up because I've thrown a ton of information out at you and you're probably saying, Dr. Jen, I just came to this video to know like, what can I do to make my IUD insertion better? And I've got four tips for you. Number one, good counseling. Make sure that you understand what's happening, what the procedure is like, what to expect, and that you feel that you've got that good relationship with your doctor, that they will let you know what's going on before they do it, and you can ask questions, and if you want them to stop, you know that when you say stop, they'll stop. 
Number two, take that naproxen I talked about, that NSAID, before your IUD insertion, maybe 30 minutes or an hour beforehand, or tramadol or a different medication, a stronger medication, if it is prescribed to you by your physician or your midwife or whoever's inserting it. And if you're worried about it, it's okay to talk about this with your healthcare provider and say, I'm kind of worried, I think I might need something for this, what can we talk about? Third thing, you can ask your provider to place that lidocaine prilocaine cream on the cervix before they start the procedure and so that when they put that little grasper on your cervix, it doesn't hurt as much. Number four, managing anxiety. And that's different for everybody. Maybe it's that lavender. Maybe it's bringing in a friend. Maybe it's listening to some music or watching some of my TikToks during this. Maybe it's distraction or maybe it's that you want to be told everything as it happens. Whatever you feel helps manage your anxiety and puts you in control, ask for it. And I'm gonna throw in a fifth one here too, because I do think that if you know that you are a very anxious person and you're really nervous, it is okay to ask your healthcare provider for something to help with this. Maybe it's a medicine by mouth, maybe it's medicine in your IV. It is okay to be honest because we want you to have a good experience. Yes, IUD insertions only happen once every three to 10 to 12 years, but we want those to be good procedures for you. And so if managing your anxiety is part of that, Let's do it. IUDs can be fabulous, but I totally understand and I wish that we had some better pain medication options. I think we've got some good ones out there, but I think we can certainly do better. And I think we can also do better about honestly discussing what happens and what to expect. So if you're getting an IUD, drop your questions down here. Let me know what you think, what your experience was, um, and just share because I think we can learn a lot from each other. And that includes the people who had good experiences or mediocre experiences. I want everybody to share here. I hope that helped. Go ahead, like, comment, subscribe, bell, all that good stuff. And happy contracepting, my friends, and stay safe out there.